PIP management is an important skill to practice with early on, since it directly affects the short-term performance of different systems on your ship. Effective PIP management is critical for high-level PvP and PvE combat, while also providing significant advantages to traders and explorers who want to evade or protect against attack. Understanding what your pips are doing and when to shift them has a direct and meaningful impact on your ability to function in Elite Dangerous. Pips are indicated on your distributor gauge at the bottom right-hand side of your cockpit. This small indicator is divided into three separate blocks for the main systems on your ship. Each block represents a capacitor bank within your power distributor. Below each block are a set of four dots, which are the actual pips that need to be managed. There are 12 total dots, each representing a share of available energy that can be directed to fill the block above. Only 8 dots can be fully active at a time, with up to 3 additional active pips depending on the number of multi-crew team members on board. Power can be shifted into a block by an increment of 1 pip per button press. Power shifted into a block is shifted out of the other two, with the other blocks each supplying half the power needed. If one block has no pips, then the full weight of each pip is transferred from the remaining block. This means it takes four button presses to fully power a block with no active pips. SYS is short for systems, and is responsible for feeding power to your shields and utility mounts. ENG, short for engines, feeds power to your main engines and maneuvering thrusters, as well as building charge for your boost. WEP, short for weapons, controls power to the weapon hardpoints and their cooling systems. Feeding power to each of these three capacitors has additional effects on your ship. For the system's capacitor, each full pip hardens active shields, increasing their effective protection and making each megajoule of protection go farther. For engines, each pip of power increases your thruster's acceleration and top speed to their rated maximum. It also has impact on your maneuverability. Weapon hardpoints receive greater cooling capacity the more charged the weapon capacitor is kept. The less power available in the capacitor block, the more heat each individual weapon will produce when fired. Using weapons with a high heat load while the capacitor is low is more likely to cause an overheat. The indicator bars within each block will change color based on the amount of reserve power available in each capacitor. The more strain you place on the related systems, the faster these blocks will exhaust their stored reserves. When a block is emptied, some or all of the functionality of connected equipment can be lost. Your shields will stop charging or rebuilding if the system's capacitor is fully drained. You will also lose the ability to use utility systems like chaff launchers and heat sinks. Boost functionality is unavailable if there is not enough power in that capacitor block for the boost cycle. Weapon hardpoints will stop working if the capacitor drains. When building a ship, it's important to consider the effect a given module will have on the capacitor. Even if your power plant can handle a module's base load, your distributor might not be able to operate it. This is especially true of weapons like the beam laser and plasma charger, which don't draw a lot of power to deploy, but can take a large amount to fire. The more power that a given block requires, the more pips that it needs to have to remain charged, and the more difficult that pip management becomes. A pilot's individual fighting style does have an impact on how and where you set your pips. More aggressive offensive builds may want to keep pips focused on weapons, while defensive-minded traders keep things system-focused, and speed-based explorers keep things engine-focused. Moving power around during a fight is still important, but you do need to be careful about when and where you do it. Under ideal conditions, you shift power to weapons when attacking, shields when defending, and engines for quick maneuvering. However, this model isn't always as clean as it appears. For example, what happens if you're attacking one ship while its wingman is attacking you? In this scenario, if you have a lot of draw from the system's capacitor and weapons capacitor, you are going to end up picking one, the other, or trying to split the difference. This is a big part of the reason why biweave shields don't do well on any ship with mostly thermal or plasma weapons. You will often find yourself fighting between charging a low endurance defense or powering a high DPS weapons array. If, however, you opt for a standard or prismatic shield, 
and have the ability to withstand the attacker at no pips to shields, then you are free to press aggression while ignoring an attacker's efforts, securing one kill before focusing on another, at the cost of taking additional shield damage. The inverse is also true, where low-draw weapons and strong, rapidly regenerating shields pair together to allow for more maneuverability and defense capacity while attacking. If, during the course of a fight, you constantly find yourself running out of power in a capacitor block, it's a good idea to look into less demanding modules. Charge enhanced engineering on a power distributor will only get you so far. Skilled attentiveness can allow you to run more, but keep in mind that a distributor requiring constant attention is taking said attention away from the fight. More forgiving module layouts are ultimately more reliable, but at the cost of peak damage output. For example, take a look at this Type 10 build. Knowing that the Type 10 is slow to maneuver, and therefore requires more attention to maneuver in relation to a target, I opted to set this ship up with strong defensively oriented biases. The weapon capacitor can operate effectively on this build with only two pips for quite a while. The engines are ignored, leaving the shield capacitor able to receive a full four pips. During combat, this distributor needs very little attention. I might shift a third pip to weapons for an especially long attack run, but I do not have to be very proactive, and I don't run out of weapon power very often. Pairing a bunch of Hydra devices on multiple capacitor blocks can make things difficult, especially in fights against multiple adversaries, because it reduces your ability to effectively power multiple blocks when needed. The more demanding your weapons array, the less distributor power you ultimately have for shields and engines. PvP builds are able to get away with so much because they plan on mostly single engagement scenarios, where there is a clear division between attacking and defending. Only one system ever needs to have priority at a time during single combat. Group situations change the game by adding the possibility of receiving damage from multiple attackers. In these situations, there is often a direct choice made between damage output, greater maneuverability, or defense, and that can get very sticky. The only right answer here is what lets you win, and there are a lot of right answers to distributor management. When flying, I like to think about what I'm doing in terms of how the capacitor block is labeled, and then make adjustments per situation. In my Type 10, it's basically all systems all the time, with two pips and weapons. In something like a Vulture, I'll keep power to the engines for max maneuvering and speed. If I get attacked, I'll rotate to the hostile ship, then switch full power to shields and boost past them in a joust, giving me time to scan and evaluate the attacker. If it's a PvP Fertilance, I'll shift power back to engines and continue boosting away while I set up for a hyperspace jump. If the Fertilance starts to catch up, I shift power back to systems, flip, and boost past again shifting power to engines once I pass the hostile. I'll do this as many times as needed to spool for a jump and then retreat once possible. Keep in mind that pip management and power management are totally separated from each other. Power management is only concerned with module base loads on the power plant, known as power draw on a module stat screen. PIP management is concerned solely with providing the power to operate a module after its base load is satisfied, known as distributor draw on the stat screen. It's possible for a module to require very little power draw and still have a demanding distributor draw. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.